The global automotive industry has been reeling under distress when it comes to supply chain, especially semiconductors, you know, which for which we have seen a huge shortage over the last two years. To know more about the realistic situation right now and what has been really happening in this space, we have Jeremy Bouchot, Director, Autonomy and e and &E in Semiconductor, s and Global Mobility. Jeremy, thank you for taking out the time for this conversation. Thank you, Mayank. So, Jeremy, the industry has been going under very painful times over the last two years. So, when it comes to the semiconductor shortage, you know, when do we see the industry to finally see some respite? I mean, we're, we're seeing, you know, the chip shortage, I um, mean, the chip supply is improving over the last few months. What, what do we expect going forward? So, we think we are, we are not out of the ditch yet. Uh, we think there is still a long way to recovery. Um, what you say is true. We've actually, uh, I mean, we've heard contradictory information over the last uh, six months here. Uh, three, four, five months ago, the industry was more positive. We were mentioning, we were seeing at the, in the middle of the year, some uh, improvement in the mood here. Volkswagen was quite uh, uh, a bit here seeing uh, reporting improvement, the same with Valeo, Ford, etc. But uh, actually here as of uh, mid of October, we notice again that the industry is starting to, to be worried again. And you can see on, on the right, uh, many much more uh, sobering statements from Volvo, Stellantis, Honda, etc. Cuts, cuts, cuts again. And um, the industry, I must say, is in the dark. So what we've we what we've been saying here for 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 quite a while here is that the uh, the chip shortage was going to list to last at least until 2024 on uh, we've just revised our analysis here based on on latest uh, data from the chip industry from the capacity from the uh, demand from other industries and we still think as well um the constraints on automotive are going to last through 2024. It's not really going to get any better before 20, uh, 20, end of 24, early 25. Maybe a, a few words on how we, we came to that. So we've been uh, looking, we've been trying to understand what are all of the parameters which are impacting, uh, which are causing this uh, chip shortage for cars. And we've been really focusing on four parameters. So the, the number of chips per car, and this number of chip per car is increasing, is increasing with electrification very, very rapidly. Um, the other aspect as well is a mismatch of production and demand. So that's more of a short-term effect, but we call it the, the toilet paper effect, you know, a panic buying. Last year, we've seen the tier one buying many more chips than they needed, just any, any chips they could put their hands on. And this has distorted basically the entire supply chain here. This, is, this has been an issue, it's getting better. What we also need to look is the total capacity for chip fabrication. I mean, we've, we've seen really there is just not enough capacity for a lot of the chips which are used in cars, which are using older mature process nodes. There is just not enough capacity. So there is a structural limitation here, which we are monitoring. And then the, the last aspect is for given capacity, how much of it is actually reserved or can go to automotive or is actually taken by Apple for the next iPhone launch or et cetera. So this is really the, these are the four parameters which we are monitoring here on a quarterly basis to try to actually convert all of this, this total capacity, the demand by car into number of, of cars which can be produced. And um, on this is here, I'm not going to go into all of the detail, but these are the, these are the results. So what you can see here with the dark, uh, line here are the vehicle production by quarter, millions uh, of cars here. And uh, so we are right now here, beginning of Q3. What we are showing here in uh, with a dotted line is the actual number, the, the, the actual ceiling, the number of cars which could be produced given the capacity, given these four parameters I was mentioning before. On what you can see here is that it's desperately flat. It starts increasing here a little bit here in the second half of this year, mostly because the demand from other industries is, is going down. Uh, but then it's flattening again, and we only start seeing it going up again here from 2024, when some of the investment in new capacity actually 
comes into play and actually produces more, more chips for more cars. But overall, if you're seeing our vehicle production forecast, it's actually constrained still by this uh, chip capacity here for the foreseeing, uh, foreseeable future. So Jeremy, when you talk about additional capacities kicking in, so are these capacities going to come in the mature process nodes, the 40 nanometers, you know, which are especially prevalent in the automotive industry, or are we seeing the industry itself transitioning towards the newer generation with seven nanometers or even the, the even further advanced nodes like the four nanometer technology? Okay, so this uh, this slide should help answer this question. So it's a little bit complex and uh, in, requires a bit of explanation. But what we've shown here are in the gray boxes, the different types of chips which are in a car. So in a conventional car, that's uh, about a thousand chips today. If it's an electric hybrid car, you will have a few thousand chips here, yeah, you will have many more, but you have many types of chips. So you have a few very advanced chips here, the, the processor, the SOC. So here, what I have also is the, the process nodes, as you mentioned, so the very advanced nodes, you know, seven, five, three nanometer for year of deployment. And here you have also to the left, the older process nodes. What's very important to notice here is that the majority of the chips in cars, if you're looking at the volumes here, are made on these older process nodes. And what is important to also notice here is that the, these older process nodes here, especially for the analog chips, they are in high demand for other industries, for mobile phones, for example, you need analog chips for many functions in the car, for in the phone, for the uh, uh, for the RF front end, for the IN audio, etc. So here we have actually a real crunch of a high demand from automotive on from other industries with high volumes. And what we put here in a white box is actually the percentage of all of the equipment investment which has been announced here for 22 and 23 for these older process nodes where there is a lot of demand for automotive but also for other industries compared to the more advanced process nodes. And most of the investments you know, is on these more advanced process nodes. So, you know, 28 nanometers, it's, uh, there is a lot of investment here, which is good news for microcontrollers because the, we see the microcontrollers were mostly on 130, 90, 40 nanometers, but next generation go to 28 nanometers. So we're get, going to get better there, but there is just not enough investment here on these older uh, process nodes here, as you can see it here. We've done some, some further analysis here. So, uh, I mean, you, you're right, you, you may have read a lot of announcement of billions, tens of billions, hundreds of billions of dollars uh, announced by everyone here in the, uh, in the industry. But again, if you're looking at the detail of that here, and this is for the equipment by process node, the, where there is a big spike here, this is, this is three nanometers, for example, four or five nanometers. So this is, this, this is hardly helping. This is not helping for semiconductor for cars. This is very important for other industries. As I mentioned before, 28 nanometers, good effort here, good news for the microcontrollers, but all of these analog chips of so this red zone I was mentioning on the slide before, there is just not enough, not enough investment. On, on this slide here shows the, the capacity in terms of numbers of wafers. It's, it's growing. And it's growing uh, a little bit more here, but just not enough to, to make up for the increased demands for these chips because of electrifications of cars here. And then more important as well. So on this graph here, so the, this is the capacity on investment. In red, what we are showing here is the spending on equipment, which, which looks like a great, great news. You know, in 22, 23, massive increase of the investment for these capacities for analog. The problem here is that all of the demand is so strong, there is a lead time, which is no longer three, uh, six months as it used to be. It's now 18, 30, 32 months to get the equipment after you make the check. So it means all of this spike of investment is not going to generate additional capacity before 24. And then you need another six months, nine months to ramp up all of the uh, all of the production, so it means 
this great news here in terms of more capacity for analog chips, which are really in high demand, which are the, the structural problem today for cars, is not going to really produce much more capacity for the automotive industry before end of 24, early 25. So this is 25 is really when we see we are going to get out of this structural deficit of capacity, not before. Right. And Jeremy, are we also going to see companies sort of, you know, re revolutionizing their e, e architectures? You know, you mentioned about electrification with EVs also becoming a lot mainstream now. Mm -hmm. Are companies also looking at sort of just transforming their entire vehicle architectures, you know, reducing the number of microcontrollers and, you know, uh, yeah. going towards very simpler architectures to reduce yeah. the complexity in the systems? You are comes, you're absolutely right here. On, on your right here, the, these new centralized architectures will, will dramatically cut the number of uh, microcontrollers. I mean, if you're looking at Tesla, which is the most advanced here, they are the Tesla S introduced 10 years ago, which was on the conventional architecture, it was using, I think, around 85 uh, microcontrollers. The, the new models, you know, which are on a new um, centralized architecture, they have about a dozen, maybe 15 microcontrollers. So you really have cut dramatically this number. But as I was mentioning before, the crunch is not so much on microcontrollers because, again, here they are moving, microcontrollers can move to smaller process nodes, and they have started here. On 28 nanometers, as I was mentioning before, there is a big spike of investment. So microcontrollers, I think we are in a good shape. The problem is more on these analog chips, and there is not, the new architectures do not influence the, um, the, uh, the architectures here, uh, the, um, the demand for analog chips. So even when you move to a centralized architecture, you will just need as much power management, as many chips to control the, all of the motors, all of the, uh, uh, even all of the processors which are in the chips. So new architectures do not help in this red uh, crunch area here. Great, Jeremy, thank you so much for that uh, insightful conversation and you know for enlightening us about uh, the realistic situation on the chip shortage and the industry, I believe, is still not out of the woods and we'll have to give some more time before we can see seamless supplies of chips for the new, pro new car production. Yeah, we're going to talk about chips for cars for a while still. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much.